with that, I have some divorce advice for all of you. And you know what? I think we need to bring in Purple Rain. We're going to, we're going to transition to Purple Rain because we're going to have a talk with Uncle Omar about uh, divorce advice. Uh, there's a young lady that is wondering about whether or not she should get advice. This young lady is 28 years old. Here's what she says. I have been married to my husband, who's 32 years old, for almost six years now. I love my husband, but lately I have been contemplating telling him I would like a divorce. We welcomed our first child in September of 2022. That's rough. So it's an incredibly difficult decision for me. We have done couples counseling in the past, and I've encouraged him to talk with the therapist after the baby arrived, and he started having the jealous feelings that, but he never followed through. We had a big blowout fight, or we have a big blowout fight at least once a week. And no matter how much I express, I feel like I am not being heard. It never results in an actual resolution. When our first son arrived, my husband dealt with some jealousy issues and having to share me with the baby. Those are his words. We have never really been the same. And all this constant fighting really has me debating on if we should call it quits for the betterment of our son but I truly do not know if having divorced parents is better than having parents that fight a lot. I just want to make the best of shit decision for him. All right. These are my candid thoughts. I don't know, Dominic, what would you tell this lady just off the basis of the strength of what she just said in your 25 year old life perspective, based on what she's saying there, what do you think that I'm going to say? Yay or nay to this? Nay. <laughs> you think that I'm going to tell them they should stay together? Oh, no, no, no. You should uh, definitely leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just, let's, let, let's get this started. If you want to get divorced, you guys have been married for six years now. All right. So that means you were 22. He was 26 when you guys got married. You were just a baby when this happened. But you guys have a child together. And look, six years in, you guys have committed this much of your life together, but you're not going anywhere. You have this child and what you're going to get divorced. You're going to be a single mom. You're going to get divorced and he's going to be a single dad. And you're going to have to figure out the custody and visitation of it all. Likely it sounds like that's probably going to be you because you're telling me that, you know, he's jealous of the baby and all, but Hey, that's a very real discussion that has to be had custody and visitation. What's it going to look like? What is the visitation going to be? Is it going to be every other weekend? Are you guys going to do a 50-50 thing? What about alimony? We're going to talk about child support. We're going to talk about uh, spousal support, which you're not, you're probably not going to get much of uh, since you guys are in, in merit. Well, in California, in California, if you haven't been long, married longer than 10 years, there's a, there is a presumption that if you're going to get alimony at all, it's going to be for presumably half the length of the marriage. So you're going to have a few years of that. Look, getting divorced is a really, difficult thing to do. It's permanent, but it is difficult. You got to go through financial disclosures. You got to go through, we got to have these talks about support. We got to have these talks about custody and visitation. How are we going to divide up the assets? It is not a lightweight thing. And you know what? It's a lot harder going through all of that when you have basically a one-year-old uh, toddler growing up in your house. And so I'm not saying that you should or that you shouldn't. I'm just saying that is a very big decision. I'm glad that you're asking me about it because it, um, you know, it, it's something that you should consider, but she consent continues. This is what she says. Um, today we argued and I told him why something he did was bothering me instead of trying to hear where I'm coming from and see my perspective. He gaslights me and deflects like his life depends on it. This is the outcome I expect to the point where I just totally avoid talking and about things that bother me. I know that this is not healthy, but mentally, this is where I'm at. You can only be told your feelings are invalid and crazy so many times before you start to think that might be true. Well, you know, uh, to be honest with you, it sounds like the relationship is on the outs. Any man that gets jealous of his wife taking care of their son is a red flag. 
But I'll tell you what, it's not uncommon. You know, it's a very common thing. So here you have, you guys are, are in this relationship and for all of this time, and you guys were together for six years and who knows how long you're together before that. Now, all of a sudden, here comes this, this baby that's stealing all of your time. You don't have time to be intimate. You don't have time to go on dates. Uh, you probably uh, don't even have time to get dressed up and, and, and put on your makeup the way that you normally would. Uh, because, hey, it's a 24-hour job to do this, uh, this baby thing. And the truth is that if you're dealing with the brunt of it, which it sounds like you probably are, and he's over here telling you that your feelings, and I, I can only imagine what your feelings were, but I imagine that you're feeling underappreciated. You're feeling like you're doing this all by yourself. You're probably feeling exhausted. Uh, you feel like you're, you know, living in this weird baby world and you just kind of have this desire to be an adult sometimes. And, you know, you're trying to do your best to take care of your son. And here's this guy um, worried about his own selfish needs. It's the danger of having a child when you're married. It changes up the whole dynamic, man. Um, intimacy is less. You guys are going to look worse. Just necessarily, you're going to look worse. When you were 22 years old, you were this young, um, hot, vibrant, attractive young woman. And you've given this man your best years. And him was probably the same. He's the, the same guy. But now you've had this baby and your body has transformed into something that you're not used to. Um, and he's having to deal with that. And he's, well, not him. You are having to deal with that. And so your, your insecurities are probably through the roof. And what you require to basically counterbalance that is you need some things from him. And what you don't need from him is him telling you about how he feels slighted because you are breastfeeding the child as opposed to doing whatever you're going to do with him. It's understandable why you would want to get divorced. I guess you guys mentioned you've been through counseling. You can only go through counseling so far. But I could just tell you this. Most men, the counseling is very simple. We don't have, men, most men, don't have a strong desire to talk about feelings. We don't have a strong desire to try to understand what you're going through. And most of the time, especially if he's trying to do all of this gaslighting stuff and make you feel guilty for taking care of your son, he doesn't have a large capacity to show you empathy. And you're going to go through this for a very long time. And what's more is he's 28 years old. No, he's not 28 years old. He's 32 years old. And he's old enough to know better. If you think it's going to get any better uh, from this point out, it's probably not. And I hesitate to say that because I would love to be able to tell you that, oh yeah, no, this is gonna be fine. It's perfectly normal to go through this gaslighting phase. It's perfectly normal for him to feel guilt or not guilt, jealousy over the attention that you're giving to your son. Those are normal things, but I'll tell you what, most well-adjusted men that are in that position recognize what you're going through, even if they're not able to voice their support for you, even if they're not able to articulate how they feel about you or, or feel or tell you that they appreciate you and all of these things. We have our certain ways about how we do it, you know, through our actions. Look, men, the good relationships that I've seen with my clients and mind you, when, I, when, when people come to me, they're usually at the point where you're at. Should I get a divorce? Should I not? And it just, you know, it's, it's a difficult decision to make. But I'll tell you what, the odds that he's going to all of a sudden change overnight and start acknowledging and appreciating you in a way that you want to be appreciated is slim to none. I guess the question really is, like, what if he, what, what is it that he could possibly do that could make you feel better because that is not an easy answer. You got to be realistic with yourself. Like, what is it that he could, what, okay, let's just say in a perfect world, he recognizes you and he acknowledges how much you're going through. And he starts telling you about how you're, 
never mind about whatever your body's going through. You're still beautiful to me and all of these things. And he starts respecting the awesome job that you have as a mother and the breastfeeding and the bonds and, and changing diapers and all of this stuff um, and saying, you know what, don't worry about our time. We'll find our time. You take care of our son. Um, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to go out uh, and gather the resources and conquer and make sure that we have everything that we need. If he does all of those things, do you think it's going to fix everything? Because I'll tell you what, the funny thing about having toddlers is that the number of social anxieties, the number of relationship insecurities, and the way that you feel and how bad that you feel is infinite. You fix one problem and another one pops up. Next thing you know, you're feeling neglected. Next thing you know, he's already feeling neglected. And then, you know, that snowballs into whatever it's going to snowball into. But if he's being selfish with his time, if he's being selfish with his feelings, if he's not giving you anything in back, you really have to ask yourself very carefully, is that what's really going on? Because if the answer is yes, if he doesn't give a shit about you, if he doesn't care about what you're going through, if he doesn't even acknowledge, you know, how hard it is, your daily schedule, I remember what it's like. Every two hours that baby wakes up, hopefully your baby's sleeping through the night, but the feeding schedule, um, the constant crying, it's a 24 hour job to look after and care for a child. It changes the, di the dynamic, 100% it does, because you have now sacrificed yourself uh, for this child. You have to keep it alive, you gotta keep it happy, you gotta do all of these things. And so, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna cause a lot of conflict, but I want you to be honest with what you're, sa what you're saying to me. Because the way that you have described him is like he sounds like the devil. He does not acknowledge your plight as a woman. He does not, he does not acknowledge that uh, you are now the mother of a child. He is not playing a role in rearing or raising the child or not doing his part. He just wants you to spend time with him and, and do his bidding. If that's truly what it is and you're not embellishing, that sounds like a like a bad guy. And if that's truly what he's doing, is he going to get better? No, no, he's 32. He's 32 years old. Matter of fact, it's probably going to get worse because you know what happens with the men when they're 32 years old? They start physically degrading. It's really hard. Look, I'm 43. I remember how I looked when I was 27. I don't look like that anymore. Hey, Dominic, in 10 years, you're not going to look like that anymore. It's going to be something completely different. You can, but there's a whole regimen. There's a, you got to take care of yourself and be healthy and go to the gym and do all this kind of stuff. You have to, it's just a different thing with men. Men have their own insecurities. And right now I can tell you that what that man might be feeling, he might be feeling insecure himself. He might be getting a little bit of a belly. He might be losing some of his muscle mass. He might have put on some pounds. He might be feeling because you are no longer paying as much attention to him, neglected and start equating that as he always has is when my wife really feels attracted to me, she tells me and does certain things. And now all of those things have gone away. So of course, even if he was the most well-adjusted of men, he's going to feel neglected to a degree. Is that really jealousy or sin? Well, you said that it's what he said. But is that really something else? Is he maybe also feeling insecure himself? You mentioned you guys have gone to therapy. Maybe you guys have talked about this kind of stuff. Maybe you haven't. I'm just going to say, if there is any benefit whatsoever to keeping your family together, because you think that maybe this, A, this is a secret. Between you and me, when your baby is less than two years old, it's hard when your baby hits about three, four years old, it gets worse. I mean, it gets better because, you know, the potty training and all that kind of stuff, but you just come up with these new problems, behavioral issues, their energy increases, they get louder, they get more opinionated. It gets easier in terms of sleep schedule, but the duties do not change. It's still going to be hard. And hey, until they start going to school, maybe until they're about five, six, seven years old, this is a lifelong thing. You guys are either going to adjust to it or you're not. And if you think that it's impossible that you guys have, that you have no ability to make these adjustments and it's going to continue to degrade this way, 
then maybe the move is divorce. Is it better off for a child that you grow up with divorced parents as opposed to parents that are always arguing? Yeah, it is. Because matter of fact, there is a lot of what happens in homes, the screaming and the shouting and a lot of, a lot of things that happen are tantamount to domestic violence. And if you ask what the law says about it, what the law says is that, at least in the state of California, any parent that commits an act of domestic violence against the other parent in front of the child is presumed that they should never have custody or visitation of the child until they overcome that presumption. And they could do that by doing certain things to better themselves. The statute outlines like six different ways you could do that. Beside the point, it's not healthy for a child to grow up with parents that are constantly fighting. But if you don't have an ability to argue with your spouse outside of the vision or ears of your child, you better develop that skill very quickly. If you guys are screaming and shouting at each other, stop that shit. Why? There's no reason why you guys have to raise your voice at each other. If you get that angry where you're, where you're shouting at your spouse, that's stuff that you did when you were on the schoolyard and schoolyard fights. That's stuff that you did when you're a teenager. If that carries into your adult years and it doesn't stop by the time you hit your 30s, 40s, well, then you just, that's what it is. That's what it's going to be. But it's not healthy and no child should have to put up with that. And if you don't think you could do it without, uh, be with him without that happening, then maybe divorce is the best option. But if you carry that into your next relationship, it's not going to get any better. And I'll tell you what you're looking at. Being a step parent sucks. Your value as a woman at 22 is not going to be the same as a divorce, a single mother of a child at 29 who has undergone uh, the perils and the destruction of what a pregnancy does to a woman's body. It's just going to feel different. And so you're going to be different. You might meet somebody and your a communicative abilities with this other man that she, this, this new guy or whatever, maybe it gets better. Maybe it gets worse. There's no guarantee. You're gambling with your future. I paint a dark picture because you're in a tough spot. If you don't get divorced, the danger is you're going to wake up tomorrow and you're going to be 40 years old. And you're going to have a, a bad marriage and a child that's been exposed to all of the shouting and fighting and who knows how far that escalates. But at that time, you can't get that time back. If you choose to cut ties now, fine, do it. But you better go, if you're going to do that, have a clear plan. Look, divorce is not easy. Sometimes it is, but not with the kid. You could, you could easily resolve all the other issues, but resolving issues of child and custody is a difficult prospect no matter how good the circumstances are. Even if you guys are in full agreement, you know, somebody, what if somebody wants to move to Texas? What if somebody wants to, you know, do whatever? You are bound to this person for the duration of that child's life. And, you know, you don't get to pick and choose. It's, it's, that's it. When you decide to remarry or get in another relationship, that person is going to be affected by your old relationship. That makes it less palatable. It makes your options fewer. Maybe you can do it. Maybe you can't. Maybe it works out or maybe it doesn't. I'm just going to say this. If there is a way to salvage what you have, then do it. But if you know, and you're not on here on Reddit, embellishing how bad it is, and if he's truly this evil person the way that you've made him out to be, then yeah, maybe it's best to cut ties. But if you think that maybe you're overstating things, give him the benefit of the doubt. But if it continues, then maybe you're right. I guess the question just, it, it, the question lies in what is his ability to adjust? What is your ability to adjust? It's not just an adjustment for him. It's an adjustment for you. Where you guys might've been having sex every day. That might turn into like sex every week, every other week, every month, every, twice a year. I've heard all the horror stories. If that's your way of communicating and bonding with your partner and you don't have alternate means, then yeah, your part, your relationship is going to suffer. 
and it's it's unfair of me to try to diagnose this without hearing from this guy firsthand and knowing what his experiences are. I'm, I'm really getting this from you. But you know when you're heart of hearts about, you know, what's really or actually going on. I'm just, I'm just going to say this. If he is really not making any effort whatsoever to see your perspective and he's feeling, you know, jealous of your son, make at the very least an effort to find out why that is. Is it his insecurities? Maybe you guys should have that discussion. Is it because you guys are having sex less? Is it because he thinks he's 32 years old now and this isn't working out? Is it all downhill from here? That's a very real thought that real married folks go through when you have a child. Look, you're only single without kids and responsibilities for a short time in life. Once you have that first child, everything shifts. It's a very difficult psychological transition to make man or woman. The issues are different. There's some issues that are common. But if you can't make the adjustment together and you have no ability to do that, then maybe it's time to cut ties. But do not do that before at the very least giving him the benefit of the doubt and seeing where this transitions um, while the baby is young, two, three years old. This might all, he might grow out of it. He might learn how to be a dad. Right now he's learning how to be a dad. Right now you're learning how to be a mom. You might even have a better grip on it than he does. But more importantly, he's having to learn on the fly how to be a husband to you with the birth of your son. And you also have to learn how to be a wife to him with the existence of your son. It's a variable, it's a variable that has changed and you can't change it now. There's no going back. So it is what it is. And that is what you, that, that's what you sign up for, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, through the changing of the seasons, through the passage of time, no matter how good it is, no matter how bad it is, you chose this man. You chose him when you were young. I wouldn't have advised you to do that, but you did. And you chose to take him on with all of his, uh, all the worst of the worst, all of his snakes, all of his demons, all of everything. You chose that. If you don't make an attempt to embrace it, then you're doing yourself a disservice and you're possibly doing your son a disservice. You never know. In a couple of years, it might work out. It might. Because if what he's going through is a maturity issue, there's no fixing that. But if it's a transition issue, well, that's temporary. And, you know, he might wake up at 35 years old and just completely figure it out. It's going to take him a little while. His whole life has changed. There's, it's just, everything is different when you have a child. And so give it a little bit of time. There's no reason for you to get a divorce right now unless you are unsafe. If it's just you're feeling a certain way because, you know, your feelings, that's one thing. If it's your safety, that's quite another. Then run for the hills. Just give it some time. Wait and give it a year. You might be surprised at how much you guys learn how to be married with a child. It might work out. Counseling doesn't solve everything. And people, I feel like they rely on that so too much as a crutch. Most men are not receptive or going to be receptive to marriage counseling because it's this awkward thing. This person is telling you about how you're supposed to be a man and how you're supposed to be attentive to your wife and her emotions and all of this stuff. And, you know, the act of even getting becoming receptive to that is an act of what's in and of itself. But you guys have been together. So look, you guys are partners. Try to figure it out on your own. There is a line that you should set for yourself. This is the deadline. This is the cutoff. There's a, I'm willing to put up with this, but I'm not willing to put up with that. And you guys are already talking about this. And honestly, you should be having this conversation with him that, look, that I feel like this is where we're going. If we don't change something, this is what's going to happen. And so you need to know that I'm your wife and I'm raising your son. And I want to make sure that you feel appreciated and attentive, but also I have needs too. He may or may not be receptive to that. You've already told me that he's not receptive to that, but give it a chance. Let him make the adjustment. If the adjustment doesn't come, then there's nothing wrong with cutting ties early. Your son will survive. Is it better or worse to have a broken home versus an intact home? I don't know. I, I really don't. In, in a good marriage, if the marriage is good, of course, that's, that's better. That's what everybody has. But guess what? What's the percentage of the world's population that you think has that? Very small. 
Your child is resilient. He'll adjust. So in the meantime, don't cut the ties right now. Give it a little bit. See where it goes. See how he matures. See how this new child and the changes that you guys both have to make, see where it lands and then make the decision then. But if no change and whatever the gaslighting continues without acknowledgement of the awesome sacrifice that you've made for the family, that's not going to get better. Then you want to cut the ties. A little premature, but yeah, you guys are heading that way. Just let's see how it develops and then we'll see. But that's all, that's all I have for you guys on this issue of the Purple Haze Reddit advice, relationship and divorce advice from family law attorney Omar Serrato. We're missing Ileana Rosa today because she's taking care of her very sick child. It's, it's a rainy day in Southern California. Everybody's getting the flu. I've been able to avoid it thus long, this thus far, um, you know, luckily, but we'll see. But that's all I have for you guys for this week. We will see you guys on the next episode. I love you guys all. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.